So in this uh, presentation, we're going to look at set theory stuff. And what we have here is, let's see now, draw a labeled Venn diagram depicting ABC. These are three events. These are three subsets of the universal subset U. Uh, in such a way that they divide U into eight disjoint regions. So let's do that first off. And what I'm going to go and do is I'm going to go to the next slide here, which should be blank. There we go. Now, so what I'm going to do is actually just is first off draw the universal set. And the universal set is uh, depicted as a box diagram. And true, well, I should try, try to try use a straight line as much as possible. There we go. So this is U, and that is the universal set. So all uh, everything that is in the universal set is in the boundary of this uh, rectangle. Now what I'm going to do now is draw uh, regions A, B, and C, or subsets A, B, and C. So I'm going to draw A. Draw B and let's put it in green here. C. Okay. Now, what does that mean? Do I have eight disjoint regions? Well, let's sorry, let's put that back in A, B, and C. Let's just let's sort of label them a bit better. Now, do I have eight disjoint regions? Well, let's work from the inside out and let's just give each of them little, um, let's call this region one, let's call this region two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have eight uh, with the, re the rectangle around the corner and the three circles, we can divide up the um, universal set into eight distinct regions. And there, there they are, there. So that's that part done. Now, uh, the next part of the question is, this is the subset X and it's a subset of U and it's defined with the following membership table. So what we have to do is depict it on our Venn diagram. Okay. Now, so U is or this is a this region X. What we have to find do uh, do is find where we have a one here. Okay. So there are four regions where there is a one. Let's highlight this. these regions here. Now, with regards to what we've done already, let's look at the corresponding values for A, B, and C. Now, zero means not within the boundaries of A, and one means within the boundaries of that C. So, zero for A, not within A, not within A, not within B, but within C. So this is like, oh, you could sort of say, C only. So let's go back to our diagram here. So which region here corresponds to being within C, but not within A and B? Well, clearly it corresponds to this region here. What I have written as region 7. Now I might have to sort of fix up my boundaries as I go. There we go. Or fix up my Venn diagram as I go. So first the first region is region seven. Uh, what I have as region seven. It's within C but not within A or B. 
Okay, so it corresponds to that region there. So we've got three more of these regions. We have A only, but not B and C. So this is pretty similar. We're just going to do it for A here. And there, this one here. This region here, that corresponds to region 5. Uh, as what we see there. But two more. And uh, we have this one here now. One zero one. So it's within A and it's within B, but it's not within sorry, it's within A and within C, but not within uh, B. Likewise, this is within A and B, but not within C. So, what regions correspond to being within A, within B, and not in C, and similarly A and C, but not within B? So, it's these intersection regions here, just beside the intersection regions, this one here, uh, region 3 and region 2. Now, just uh, I'm going to just sort of put in my Venn diagrams uh, Again, are my boundaries again just to sort of make them a bit clearer to look at and then we can go back and just sort of have a bit of a discussion about that um, so region 2 there just here is within the boundaries of A, it's within the blue line, and it's within the red line, but outside the green line. Okay, so it's A1, B1, and C0. And likewise, region 3, it's within A, it's not within B, and it's within C. So it's 1 for A, 0 for B, and uh, 1 for C. So it's that's 3 there, and that's 2 there regions, my regions 3 and 2. Okay. Now, the, uh, that's just a bit of a spill over there, that bit there. So, that is our sh uh, shaded area. What we have to do now is try and describe it as best we can, using the most uh, simple notation we can. So, together, um, what I'm going to do is actually sort of split it up into two parts. So the first part is I'm going to just pause this a second just so I can reuse the diagrams. So what we're going to do is actually try and sort of express it as two parts together. Now what I'm going to do first off is I'm going to sort of say it's the union of these following regions. So I'm just going to sort of recolor um, uh, one of them here, or actually I'm going to decolor one of them. I'm going to get rid of the white here. Just sort of set that back to normal. So that was what we were looking at there is regions two and five. That was three, oops. That was three there, that was seven there. So region two and five, particularly this region here, okay, that's the one region we're going to look at. That's 2 and 5, regions 2 and 5. That is also the set difference of A and C, or A minus C. Okay, that's regions 2 and 5. It's this shaded region here. Let's go to the other one here, and what we're going to do now is color out this region here, just so we're left with regions 2 and 5, or sorry, 3 and 7. So regions 3 and 7, that similarly, in a similar sort of way, that corresponds to uh, in a similar sort of way, that corresponds to uh, 
3 and 7 corresponds to uh, this is C down here circle the set C that corresponds to the shaded region here corresponds to C minus B the shaded region here okay so that one there is A minus B this one here is C minus B together what we have there is A minus C union C minus B okay and that's as simple as we can get it really you probably could come up with some other answers but anyway that's the end of this presentation